Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to my first foray outside of Pokemon Showdown, excluding a poem I posted like two years ago. Uh, we're looking at my favorite game. Hands down. Sorry, Pokemon. This is it. Magic the Gathering. Uh, I'm going to start a new series with some magic stuff. If you're just here for Pokemon Showdown, I'm, I'm just saying go away now. This is not beginner level or anything. So this is a quick commander deck tech of a deck I put together called Overcooked Eggs. So, from this point on, I'm using advanced terminology. Don't expect any basic stuff. Overcooked Eggs is a mono-black artifact-based strategy that is inspired by... Well, it's not inspired by... It, it draws similarities to a budget commander deck I saw on MTG Goldfish. Uh, a lot of similarities, but let's talk about the name first. Uh, eggs is, of course, the strategy where you sacrifice cheap artifacts for cards and mana, and we're doing something kind of like that, except for we're not in the typical egg color of blue, and we don't actually have any of the egg cards from, well, it's like Tempest or something. Uh, we're in mono black, hence overcooked. If I would have called it burnt, but... That would have been like fire, or mountains, and red. And one of these days I'll make a mono red eggs deck called Burnt Eggs. It'll be great. But for now we have overcooked eggs. Let's take a quick look at our commanders, which are Tevish Zot, Doom of Fools, and Kesket the Flesh Sculptor. Also, I want to say, I really, really like this deck. I think it's really cool, so I'm going to ramble a little bit. Uh, let's start with Kesket. Can I? Do I get a thing? This is the laser pointer? Laser pointer. Let's start with Kesket. Kesket is a 5 cent commander. 2 and a black for 1 3 legendary creature, human artificer. It has tap and sacrifice 3 other artifacts and or creatures. Look at the top 3 cards of your library. Put 2 of them in your hand and the other into your graveyard. So Kesket allows you about once per turn to sack some stuff to draw 2 cards. That's great. That's exactly what we want to be doing. Uh, I should also mention this is a budget deck. The main deck itself is under $100, and all the um, deck, including an alternate board, is under $150. So this is our main commander. It's cheap, it blocks pretty well. We paired it, a lot of decks online like to pair it with Armix, Filigree Thrasher, who's also a cheap commander. It's two and a black. 3-2, it lets you discard a card to kill something, effectively, based on the number of artifacts you have. I was underwhelmed by it. I don't like discarding cards all that much. I really just wanted more card draw. Enter, Tevish Sot, Doom of Fools. This is about $5 commander, 5 mana, 4 and a black for 4 loyalty planeswalker. It can immediately take up to 6 and make 2 thrills that can block for it, so it's actually really hard to kill. Or you can plus one, which is the main ability we'll be using, uh, which lets you sack another creature or planeswalker to draw two cards. And it's three if you sack a commander, which might come into play, especially if we do this minus ten. Which lets you steal all the commanders, even from the command zone. Really cool uh, ultimate. Probably never going to happen. These are really on this plus one, and to plus one up to it would take six turns, and then you doing it, so... Uh, these two pair really well together. The Thralls from Tavish Sot can fuel Kesket, and they're both working on very similar angles. They're sacrificing things. Um, this duo has 41 commanders on, uh, 41 decks on EDH rec, and all of them are creature-based aristocrat strategies. This is artifact-based. Tavish Sot just works because we're making tokens and things like that that it can sack anyway. Just keep us moving through our cards. It's really about this guy. So let's get into our ramp package. Um, this first stuff, this is uh, our gasoline. It's a little less on theme except for one of them. We've got our soul ring, charcoal, diamond, arcane signet, our core. You could probably add more if you really wanted to. We have moon silver key, which usually fishes up a soul ring, but it can also fish up uh, some eggs or basic lands, which is nice. It's a little pricey, but I, I like it. Solemn Simulacrum works really well with what we're doing. It gets a land. Uh, it, when it dies, we draw a card. 
and recurring that is pretty powerful. It's one of the more expensive recursive guys, but it's worth it. And then our big ramp piece, Blink Moth Urn. So Blink Moth Urn has the if it is untapped text, like Winter Orb, uh, and it gives you an amount of everyone on each of their pre combat main phases, an amount of mana equals the number of artifacts that he or she controls. This card is dangerous, but we're making a lot of artifacts and it can really just accelerate you into the stratosphere. Um, speaking of large acceleration, this is our diesel. Um, this has two categories. First, we have Priest of Yagmoth and Soul Devi Adnate. Oh god, there's so the text is very bulky. Uh, so Devi Adnate lets you sack a black or artifact creature and make mana equal to its casting cost. Priest of Yawgmoth just does it for artifacts, um, and it's just not, uh, so you can do like a non-creature artifact like Blink Moth Urn, while it's, uh, Priest of Yawgmoth can't sack something like uh, Soul Devi Adnate, or whatnot. Um, these are big mana boosts, and we're oftentimes as you can see here, reducing costs, or um, there's a couple very specific cards that work very well with these two cards that we will get into in about two slides. The second category is cost reducers. Now there are some more powerful cost reducers than the five we have featured here, but they're too expensive. So we have these five. Helm of Awakening uh, makes everyone's spells cost less, which is of course dangerous, but it also works on things past our artifact spells. Foundry Inspector and Cloud Key are generally just going to be artifacts. Technically, Cloud Key can name creatures or enchantments. Uh, you're not going to name any of that. It's artifacts. It's a Foundry Inspector without legs. And then Joyra's Familiar uh, makes all your historic spells cheaper. So it'll make all your artifacts, but also your commanders, a couple other legendary creatures, and Ugin the Ineffable. He has a gold shade because he is one of our two gold star cards absolutely integral to how the deck functions. He makes all your colorless spells cost two less to cast, and his plus one can make creatures that when they die, you get to put the card that, uh, that you get to, you, you flip a creature, it's 2-2, two -two, it's off the top of your deck, and when it dies, it goes to your hand, if that makes sense. Um, it's also removal, and we don't have much of that, and it's removal that can hit a lot of card types, which is really nice. Uh, this is pretty much solitaire. We're very much playing with ourselves. Ugh, no. Uh, so having that little bit of interaction is nice. The big thing though is the static cost reduction. Two, it's a lot more than one, and it can make a lot of infinite combos happen like on its own. Uh, I will say the base form of this deck has a lot of, there's a lot of infinite combos on this deck. A lot of configurations and a lot of base combos. I'll kind of point them out as we go along. But just keep in mind, I can't point out all of them. Next up, we have the omelet. These are all of our eggs, per se. Uh, we have Blood Fountain, which is a one mana artifact that actually gives us two artifacts, which is huge. It can also return creatures and cycle through cards. Nile Spellbomb is a little bit of interaction. You can get rid of people's graveyards, when it, or you can just sack it and pay a black to draw a card. Our core eggs are these four our base eggs. Chr uh, Terrarian, Chromatic Star, and Chromatic Sphere all basically cycle for mana and cards. These two you can sack uh, on their own, so you can sack them to a sack outlet and still draw the card. Chromatic Sphere cannot do that, but it's still pretty valuable here. Uh, this is probably the most cuttable card in the deck, and you will cut it when you use your alternate board, which I'll get to at the end. The Implement of Malice is Another thing that when it dies, you can draw a card, uh, but you can also use it to make people discard cards, which is really nice. We also have Brainstone, which lets you brainstorm, which is really powerful. Prize Statue, which makes treasures when it enters and dies, so it's actually mana neutral, and with cast reducers, mana positive. And then the biggie, Icker Wellspring, which honestly should probably be a gold star card. You play it, and when it dies, you draw a card. It's off. It's a two mana draw two, and it's often better than that. Uh, you get it for sack value, and it often has its cost reduced by your five cost reducers. It's great. Next up, we have our poor unfortunate souls. Um, damn it! I should have looked up the lyrics to poor unfortunate souls before this. 
these are creatures that will be sacrificed fairly regularly. Um, first off, I'll point out the things that make tokens. Uh, Genesis Chamber and Sly Requisitioner. Uh, this makes tokens when creatures enter, this makes tokens when artifacts go to the graveyard. These two in, uh, in cahoots with Metalwork Colossus and a free sack outlet are actually an infinite combo. Is you can sack the Metalwork Colossus, uh, and uh, you get a token when it enters and when it leaves, so you can sack the tokens that it effectively makes to re uh, get it back to your hand, and it's really easy to pay for play for free because we have enough non-token, uh, non-creature artifacts, pardon me. And so you can cycle through that infinitely, uh, pretty easily. Another infinite combo with enough mana reducers, we have Mirror Retriever Workshop Assistant. With a sack outlet, you can just shuffle between the two of them. Um, there's also some things you can do with uh, another card I'll show later, later on. Um, oh no, we're missing Nimble Right Schematic. I don't know how I did that. Um, so Servo Schematic is kind of like Icar Wellspring, but it makes tokens. Nimble Right Schematic is the same, except for it makes constructs. I don't know how I missed that card. I thought I counted 100. It's basically the same card as Servo Schematic, so it's not a big deal. Uh, Hanger Backwalker can make uh, makes an amount of Thopters when it dies equal to the number of counters on it, and that can be a, just a fleet of Thopters. You can do a lot with that. It's also the only artifact creature that can be played for zero at base, which has some uh, looping potential. Then we have my big, beefy, beautiful boy, Phyrexian Tritiform. It's probably not supposed to be in the deck, generally. It is a 9-mana nine 9-9 nine nine that when it dies you get three 3-3s, three threes, and you can Encore it for 12, which means you get three of them, one for each of your opponents. Swing for 27, they die, you get another 9 Golems for another 27 power. It's stupid, it makes a ton of creatures. And it's kind of a one-card win condition. It's really good with the Soul Devi Adnate and the Priest of Yogmoth. Um, because they can make a lot of the mana to encore it by sacking it. Metalwork Colossus, of course, is also really good with those cards. Finally, we have Filigree Familiar and Circuit Mender. Basically the same card. Uh, they gain two life when they enter. When they die, they draw a card. It's really about drawing a card. Circuit Mender is objectively better. It has a little more toughness, and it's a leaves the battlefield trigger instead of a dies trigger. But they're both solid. Uh, next up, we have our Sadistic Bastards. These are our sack outlets and our payoffs. Uh, sack outlet-wise, we have Frexy's Core, which is just a sh easy shove it in the mana base. Uh, Dockside Chef lets you sack artifacts or creatures for card draw. Uh, Defiant Salvager has a very specific place because we are running, uh, I'll kind of, I don't want to jump over to it, I'll, I'll talk about it. It sacks an artifact or a creature for free, and I'll mention why that's important in a bit. Uh, for sacking ar just artifacts, we have Extruder, which you can sack an artifact to put a counter on target creature, which I will jump back to in a bit as well, um, but this is one of our better sack outlets, even if it has Echo. Uh, Thermal Navigator just lets you sack artifacts to gain flying, which looks weird until you realize it's a construct, which means you can get it with Scrapyard Recombiner, which is a thing that lets you sack, tap it and sack artifacts to get constructs. Being able to fetch up a sack outlet for artifacts is huge, uh, even with just with Scrapyard Recombiner. Then we have Fane the Broker, who does a lot for this deck. You can tap him to sack creatures and put counters on creatures, which we have a kind of a plus one plus one counter theme. Uh, you notice like the modular card over here, you'll see, and extruder, you'll see a little more later on. You can remove counters to get treasure, which is really nice, or you can just use it to sack artifacts when you need to, and you can even make a 2-1 flyer, which is a decent body. And in emergencies, you can untap it. Um, our last thing that we have here that sacks artifacts is Ruthless Technomancer. When he enters the battlefield, you can sack a creature, actually, uh, and then you make a number of treasures equals power. That can be really good with Trinaform again, and um, the this guy, Metalwork Colossus. 
um, but also things that have been pumped up a lot with our plus one plus one counters. It's very powerful. Um, it's also just pretty good with like hanger backwalker. And you can use its second ability to sack artifacts to return creatures. So if key pieces have been removed or you just want to grab something back, you can get it back with Ruthless Technomancer. Uh, and then we have our three draining effects. Uh, Disciple of the Vault is just a one mana one one that whenever an artifact dot goes to the graveyard, we have someone lose a life. It's really solid. Agent of the Iron Throne is awesome. It gives your commander creatures a drain on every artifact or creature dying, and it hits each opponent. We have two commanders. That stacks. Really, really cool, and we often have both of them out, so we're getting like two drains. Um, it's doing like six damage for every artifact going to the graveyard, which almost me which is the most powerful draining effect. Uh, Marionette Master almost measures up. It's a four black black for one three, but it has Fabricate three. So it can either give you some servos to sack, or usually you pump it up. Because whenever an artifact you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, target opponent loses life equal to Marionette Master's power. So this can drain someone for four like every time an artifact goes to the grave, and if you have something like Extruder or Fane the Broker, you can pump her up even more, and she can start draining people for six, eight, ten, fifteen, thirty-three. It can get out of hand. Uh, unfortunately, she isn't an artifact, so we can't put modular counters onto her, but it is what it is. Next up are our Grave Diggers. These are things that recur all of our artifacts. Uh, first up, we have just have, uh, I'll go through the more simple ones. We have a Buried Ruin, which returns an artifact card from her to our hand once. <sighs> Pardon the Discord. Skeleton Shard, which lets us pay one black to return an artifact creature card. I didn't know this existed. This is a cool card. You can also pay three generic if you're out of black mana, or if you have like a Blink Moth Urn. Uh, Salvaging Station is a part of an infinite combo with Salvaging Station, uh, Summoning Station, which is right here, sorry for spoilers, and the Defiant Salvager from earlier. So what you can do, if you, you also have to have a non-creature artifact to recur. So you bring back the non-creature artifact, which, unt uh, which you then sacrifice to the Defiant Salvager, which untaps Summoning Station, which lets you make a Pincher, which you sack to the Salvager, which untaps Salvaging Station. So you can loop those back and forth, just killing their things over and over again, uh, and you can make infinite... Uh, generally, you do it with like Soul Ring, so you can make infinite colorless mana. Uh, you can also just make an infinitely large dork. Unfortunately, the Pinchers are not artifacts. So you can't do this with something like Extruder, which would be great. It's a bit of a shame, but it is what it is. Uh, summoning Station comes out when you go a little bit less in on like combo stuff. Because it's not great, although getting two twos every time an artifact goes to your graveyard is pretty powerful. Trading Post is sort of a jack of all trades card. Um, it can discard cards to gain you life, you can pay life to make a goat, but the main thing is these two last abilities. You can sack a creature to return an artifact, or sack an artifact to draw a card. Both of those are great abilities to have. If Trading Post could untap, we'd be in total business. Uh, Ghost Lantern lets you return cards from your graveyard to your hand on an adventure, and then it can pump stuff up as creatures die, which is good with Artbound Reclaimer and some other things that care about counters, like our Triskelion, which you'll see a little later on. It's just a very good synergy. But Arcbound Reclaimer is a really cool card I had no idea existed. Four mana, modular two, so it enters with two counters. You can remove a counter to put an artifact card from your graveyard on top of your library, which is really good with Extruder, because you can sack an artifact to put a counter on target creature, which isn't necessarily it. So if you have an artifact that effectively costs no mana, and this Mystic Forge, you can Sack that artifact to Extruder, put a counter on Arcbound Reclaimer, remove that counter to put the artifact on top of your library, and then play it off the top of your library. And there's a ton of times that artifacts end up costing no mana. Notably, this only works with cost reducers, because we don't actually have a zero mana artifact in the deck right now. Um, 
I opted for Nile Spellbomb over Tormod's Crypt because it could draw cards. And I just, you have five cost reducers. It's not super hard to find one. Um, you can also, there are some scenarios you can pull this off with Hangerback Walker. I believe there's some ways to do that. Um, casting it on zero. Uh, the other card you could put in is Claws of Gix, which is zero mana. You can pay one and sack a permanent to gain one life. It's just very weak effect. You can also replace an Owl Spell Bomb with Tormod's Crypt if you want a way to do this a little bit easier. Or put in Lotus Petal and break the budget a little bit. Uh, and then our last golden st gold star card is Scrap Trawler. Scrap Trawler is basically a workshop assistant that only gets lesser. Oh, and it makes everything workshop assistance. Um, with cost reducers, this gets insane, but it's also just incredible value, and recurring and moving through cards becomes a lot easier, and Scrap Trawler is just an insane magic card. Um, we've kind of looked at most of this already. Mystic Forge lets you rip through cards and can combo. Summoning Station can combo and get a lot of 2-2s. Two they can also be sacked to things like Tevish Slot. Um, Mirror Works lets you copy uh, any of your artifacts, it lets you make some of your combos easier, like uh, Metalwork Colossus, which needs both of these, or anything that needs cost reducers. Because there's lots of combos that can happen just by having cost reducers. Um, and so being able to copy one of them is really powerful. We used to run Ingenuity Engine, which let you sack artifacts to return artifacts, and is also a 7 mana cascade thing. And that was really powerful with Mirror Works, but is just weak in general. Uh, you can also consider putting that in. It's a cool card. Next up, uh, we have Muscle Milk. These are our cards that are really focused on plus one plus one counters, generally putting them on, because we have, you've seen some of the synergies we have with counters. Um, but also, these let us play a really strong fair game. So Throne of Geth and Steel Overseer let us pump our entire board. Throne of Geth makes you sack an artifact and only works with things that already have counters, but you can proliferate things like Tevish Sot, Ugin, and, I don't know, if someone got Infect counters on him. Steel Overseer just puts counters on all your things, and is really good with all the tokens you make with things like Sly Requisitioner. And then these two are the two big beefy boys that made it into the final list of the more combo-oriented. Patchwork Automaton's just so cheap and a little hard to interact with, that's just super valuable. Artbound Crusher has Trample, can move its counters when it dies, and it's any artifact coming into play, including tokens. So when you're putting in counters with things like Hangerback Walker or Sly Requisitioner, this is getting bigger. And that's really, really strong. Uh, finally, before our lands, we have begrudgingly not playing Solitaire. This is our interaction suite. Uh, there, you also saw some other pieces of interactions we were going through. But we have Executioner's Capsule, which is a recursive way to destroy non-black creatures. Yehenny's Expertise is a sort of cheap board, mini board wipe that can also cast cards for free. Uh, we have a lot of cards that cost three or less, so that's pretty powerful. Feed the Swarm is our only way to deal with enchantments that isn't named Ugin. Uh, and that's really nice, so even though it's a sorcery speed removal spell that hurts us, I usually make sure Feed the Swarm makes the cut. Retributive Wand is awesome. It is a 3-mana artifact that we can sack to deal 5 damage to any target. And we're sacking and we're getting value out of it, so it's kind of nifty. Uh, it's also a 3, and we don't have a whole lot of 3-mana artifacts, which is important for things like Scrap Trawler. So, Retributive Wand, if it gets killed, you can get back uh, something like Icar Wellspring off of Scrap Trawler, which you can't do with your 2s. Uh, Triskelion is a fuelable way to kill things, which is just really strong. Uh, it's really good with the Arcbound Crusher, uh, because if the Arcbound Crusher dies, you can put a ton of counters on Triskelion. Really good with Ghost Lantern. It's got a lot of applications. Phyrexian Scriptures is our main real board wipe. You can put a counter on, a cr on one of your creatures and make it an artifact. Generally, we do that on Keskit. Um, or one of our other key non-artifact creatures, because we do have a number of them. Then it destroys all the non-artifact creatures, and then exiles everyone's graveyards. It's just really solid. It's a little slow, they can kind of prep for it, but the ability to run a board wipe that doesn't fuck with all of our stuff is really nice. Um, 
And Yehenny's expertise is kind of in that vein, because a lot of our stuff does dodge that, although Keskit doesn't without a counter, which is a little annoying, but like, Extruder can really easily get out of range. A lot of these things can get out of range with counters. Um, and some of these things die, but like Marionette Master will survive. It's a little clunky, but it also helps rebuild, which is nice, and it's cheap. Finally, our miscellaneous nonsense, aka our mana base. Um, we have a lot of non-basics. Uh, Vault of Whispers and Dark Steel Citadel, as well as Treasure Vault, are all just artifacts, and that's worth something. Bonders Enclave, Castle Lockthwain, and this War Room that didn't fit. Uh, are on here because they can draw cards if we have our commanders out of commission or anything and just have extra mana lying around. Uh, it's not hard to have a creature with power 4 or greater. It just kind of happens. Uh, Baron Moor can cycle. I just, I kind of like running the one mana cycling lands when I'm playing monocolor. Cabal Stronghold with 25 swamps can actually make a decent amount of black mana for you. Uh, and it's fairly cheap compared to Cabal Coffers, at least. And then our most important land and the most expensive card in the deck, at least the, the main deck, not including our alternate board, is Inventor's Fair, which lets us gain life if we have three or more artifacts, which is kind of neat. Mainly, this is the only tutor in the goddamn deck, if you notice. I mean, that's not entirely true. Uh, we have... Uh... <laughs> We have Scrapyard Recombiner, which tutors for Constructs, and that's it. Oh, that's not true. We have Moonsilver Key and Solemn, which can get basics or artifacts with mana abilities. It's our only real uh, tutor in the entire deck. We also run 25 Swamps. If you don't know, War Room lets you pay 3 and an amount of life equal to your commander's color identity. Uh, our color identity is only w one color, so it only deals us one damage. Uh, it's pretty versatile. Finally, our alternate board, which I'm going to have to exit presenter mode to talk to you about. Because we're going to kind of sort through this, because I think this is kind of a fun way to look at it. These are 15 cards that angle the deck out of its kind of combo and more towards mid-range. So to point at that, we have Karn, Sign of Urza, who lets you look at the top two cards of your library, uh, and give, uh, well, your opponent looks at the top two, and you can uh, get one of the cards, lots of card advantage inherent there, and it can make constructs. Can I, is there a way that I can do this quickly? Can I make it invisible? No, there's not really a way I can do it quickly. All right, bye. Um, and in the vein of card advantage, we have stuff like... I thought I had more card advantage here. I don't, never mind. Uh, we also just like making big things in this variant. So we've got like Nettle Cyst, which gets uh, power and is equal to our artifacts, count, and enchantments for what it's worth. And we can move that around, that's solid. We can also make things like Moriok Rigor pretty big, uh, because when artifacts go to the graveyard, he gets counters. Uh, this also kind of leads into our counters theme, which I'll show you show you a little bit in a sec. Um, but we also have like cranial plating, big pump, instant speed attach. Uh, Painsmith is a really neat card that lets you, whenever you cast artifact spells, give something plus two plus zero oh, in death touch. And I just kind of liked it, so I put it in. I don't know if it's good, but it's like it's really good with like Arcbound Crusher because it has trample, and trample death touch is insane. But it, it's just kind of neat, so I put it in, and, and like it's done some work in the alt board. Uh, Arcbound Ravager is another artifact sack outlet that also gets bigger and has modular, so that's leaning into our counters theme. Uh, speaking of leaning into our counters theme, we have animation module that whenever we get counters, we can put servos out. It can also make more counters, but at a very steep price. We have the Ozolith, which stores our counters, which uh, I don't know how it interacts exactly with uh, Modular, but it interacts well with things like Hangerback Walker or uh, the Automaton. Yeah, it says put those counters on the Ozolith, so I think it doesn't work with Modular, which is a little annoying, but it's actually, it's fine. 
Uh, Runaway Trash Bot is a trampler that gets power equal to our artifacts in our graveyard, so this can be a really threatening uh, trampler. It's really good with, again, things like the Painsmith that's really solid. We also have Golem Foundry, that whenever we cast artifact spells, we get charge counters that we can work to, towards three threes with, which is really nice, just get more creatures out. Uh, it's a little unfortunate that they die to Yeheni's expertise without like a Steel Overseer, but it is what it is. Uh, this is just a really neat card, another really neat card that I think works, Underhanded Designs. Whenever artifact enters the battlefield under your control, you can pay one to drain everybody, which is pretty good. And you can sack it to destroy a creature, which gives us a little bit of extra interaction, which is kind of what we're trying to do with this alternate board. Notably, we have an extra board wipe and languish, because languish is cheap. Uh, it, it would be damnation, but languish is cheap. <laughs> minus four, minus four kills a lot of stuff. Uh, our old friend from the intro, Armix, he can take out stuff when he attacks by discarding cards, which is a lot better in this more mid-rangey style. And then Herald of Anguish is the big thing we add. It has Improvise, it can sack artifacts to kill creatures, it makes everyone discard cards. It's really threatening. And finally, we add a lot of non-artifact non cards in our alternate board, so we have Inspiring Statuary, which can make them a little bit cheaper. Uh, so that's the alternate board. You can look through, obviously you can look through all of this uh, with a little bit more thoroughness in the deck link linked below. The prices ended up being $97.62 for the main board, $50.76 for the alternate board, with a total of $148.38, basics excluded, uh, and that's as of time of recording using the Moxfield costs. I believe it's Card Kingdom costs. Uh, actually, no, I think it's, TC it's TCG player costs. Um, so it's not super expensive. I do recommend buying the alternates because it really changes the style of play. It brings the power level down a point or even point, two points. And it's honestly a little bit more fun to play with because it's got a lot more interaction. It's doing a lot more with the board. And it's kind of a lot splashier. Uh, the main deck is kind of just grind, grind, grind. And for all the Marvins out there that just love their machines, uh, in their wide synergies, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, and I really like this deck. I can't recommend it enough. It's not super expensive. You can make cuts to make it more reasonable. You can totally get this deck down to $50. You just have to cut things like Inventor's Fair and be a little bit more uh, mid-rangey. So, yeah, I hope this has been enjoyable to everyone, and uh, that's it. Go away.